Tonight, breaking news what President Biden just said about running for president. It's making news already. Also tonight, the new FBI terror warning here in the U.S., what the FBI director is now saying, and the harrowing images tonight amid this expanding ground offensive in Gaza. Tonight, the images coming in, Israel's ground offensive pushing deeper into southern Gaza. The battles raging in the streets, you will see the ambulance caught in the crossfire. Palestinian civilians who had been told to go south, where do they go now? And what about the hostages? James Longman in Israel. The breaking news involving President Biden, those eye-opening comments from the president about running for office again, saying if Trump wasn't running, I'm not sure I'd be running. What this means and what the president is signaling about the stakes. Harry Bruce standing by live tonight. Also this evening, the alarming new warning from the FBI director Christopher Wray about the terror threat inside this country right now. What he spelled out today, Pierre Thomas standing by. The massive house explosion in Virginia. The blast after police were on the scene for hours trying to execute a search warrant. The suspect barricaded inside. The powerful storms slamming the west tonight. The major flooding concerns there. And the deep freeze in the east. Wind chills in the teens and 20s from the Great Lakes to the northeast. Ginger Z is standing by to time all of this out. Senator Tommy Tuberville caving after blocking hundreds of military promotions for 10 months now over his stance on abortion. Rachel Scott is here. Special counsel Jack Smith tonight revealing the case he plans to make against former President Trump, John Carl reporting. The new lawsuit involving Panera Bread tonight, allegations now of a second death, allegedly because of a drink at the chain. Actor Jamie Foxx making his first public appearance since being hospitalized and what he's now revealed. And our Made in America Christmas is back, 12 years and counting. Tonight, we start with your Christmas tree and a new way to get one. Do you have your Christmas tree yet this year? No worries if you don't. What we didn't know before and how you can help farmers across this country. World News Tonight starts now. From ABC News World Headquarters in New York, this is World News Tonight with David Muir. Good evening, and it's great to have you with us here on a very busy Tuesday night. We have several breaking stories. What President Biden just said about running for president, saying, if Trump wasn't running, I'm not sure I'd be running. Mary Bruce standing by with what this means, what the president is signaling tonight. Also, this new FBI terror warning here in the U.S. tonight amid this war in Israel. And that's where we start tonight. Israel now expanding its ground operation in southern Gaza. The images coming in tonight, the raging battles in the streets, hunting down Hamas fighters, warning civilians to get out of harm's way. But many there are caught in the crossfire. Hundreds of thousands have been told to move south, so now where do they go? Israel dropping leaflets with links to this map showing civilians safe zones, but there is limited electricity and internet, and many are getting caught in this horror. Homes destroyed in this strike. You can actually see the women trapped on an upper floor right there, down below the search for bodies. Authorities say children are among the dead. And the images tonight, an ambulance coming under fire, the crew scrambling inside. And of course, all of this tonight amid another major question. What about the hostages in Gaza, Americans among them? The ceasefire now long over, the families meeting just a short time ago with Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, and it was very tense. ABC's James Longman leading us off tonight from Israel. Tonight, battles raging in the streets of southern Gaza. The Israeli military fighting in the heart of Han Yunis, the largest city in Gaza's south. Hundreds of thousands of Palestinians have fled here for safety. This video shows the moment an ambulance was caught in the crossfire. And here, moments after another strike nearby, panic and confusion. A desperate search for survivors, children pulled from the rubble. More than 16,000 Palestinians killed, according to the Hamas-run health ministry. We're in an artillery position about two miles away from Gaza. The focus of this operation is now shifting from the north to the south. But that was where Palestinians were told to go for safety. Now, they've got nowhere to go. Israel dropping leaflets in southern Gaza with links to these maps, which they say show which neighborhoods are safe from the fighting. Today, we pressed the IDF. If you told them to go south for safety before, why would they believe you now? We advised them where to leave, 
And I'm reminding you that it's not us that chose mm -hmm. the battlefield. Hamas chose the battlefield by digging its infrastructure underneath civilians. But with limited electricity and internet, many civilians, like 22-year-old Hamza Ibrahim, don't know where to go to avoid the fighting. There is no life here in Gaza. You feel it's too dangerous for you to leave? There is a bombing everywhere and nobody can go out. And in Israel tonight, the Israeli government vowing to fight until their victory. Where the hell are you? Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu voicing outrage at what he says is the silence from the international community over the alleged sexual violence committed by Hamas during the October 7th attack. I expect all civilized leaders, governments, nations to speak up against this atrocity. President Biden today condemning Hamas, saying, quote, the world can't just look away at what's going on. It's on all of us to forcibly condemn the sexual violence of Hamas terrorists without equivocation. Tonight, the fate of more than 130 hostages, including Americans, unknown. But just days after five-year-old Amelia Aloni was freed by Hamas and back in her mother's arms this moment. <laughs> Amelia returning to school today. Her classmates waiting on the steps, all wanting to give her a hug. One sliver of hope from the war zone tonight. And James Longman back with us live from Tel Aviv. And James, uh, it's been 60 days now since the Hamas terror attack in Israel. 60 days, of course, uh, holding those hostages, including Americans. Uh, tonight, we see these uh, images of fierce fighting you've just reported from southern Gaza, the ceasefire long over. What are you learning about the hostages and the families uh, and this meeting late today with Benjamin Netanyahu? Yeah, there was a very tense meeting, David, between Prime Minister Netanyahu and the families of the hostages. According to local reports, he told them that there was no possibility of bringing their loved ones home anytime soon. Some of those present even shouting at the Prime Minister, asking him to restart the negotiations as soon as possible. David. All right, James Longman leading us off tonight in Tel Aviv. James, thank you. And we're going to turn now to President Biden and something he said late today about running for president at a closed door fundraiser in Boston. The president telling supporters, quote, if Trump wasn't running, I'm not sure I'd be running, but we cannot let him win. Let's bring in our chief White House correspondent, Mary Bruce. She's live at the White House tonight because, Mary, this made immediate news, obviously. The president signaling in these comments, it would seem, uh, if Trump wasn't his likely opponent at this point, perhaps he would not be seeking a second term. David, the president in some of his starkest terms yet laying out what is at stake if Trump is able to win back the White House. Biden saying that cannot be allowed to happen. The president saying, quote, I don't think anyone doubts our democracy is even more at risk than in 2020, saying Trump's not even hiding the ball anymore. He's telling us what he's going to do. He's making no bones about it. Trump is running a campaign of retribution. And for Biden, this has always been about Trump. He ran in 2020 to try and stop him. And Biden and says he is running now to try and protect the country from another Trump presidency. David. Mary Bruce on the comments made late today by President Biden. Thank you, Mary. Of course, the president well aware of the new terror threat here in the U.S. amid Israel's war with Hamas. Tonight, FBI Director Christopher Wray now telling Congress that he has never seen so many elevated threats all at exactly the same time. And how he answered today when asked about the warning signs before 9-11 and what the threat is now. Here's Pierre Thomas. Today, the FBI director was asked point blank if the terror threat in the U.S. is as bad as it was before 9-11. His answer, deeply disturbing. All the lights were blinking red before 9-11. Apparently, obviously, all of us missed it. Would you say that there's multiple blinking red lights out there? I see blinking lights everywhere I turn. Since the Israel-Hamas war started, Chris Ray says the terror threat is at a whole nother level with a number of terror groups, including ISIS and Al-Qaeda, using social media to call for attacks, including right here in the U.S. The DOJ also seeing a spike in threats against the Muslim community and a stunning increase in threats aimed at Jewish Americans since October 7th. I've never seen a time where all the threats, or so many of the threats, are all elevated all at exactly the same time. Ray is calling on Congress to renew a law that allows the FBI to conduct surveillance on suspected terrorists overseas. That law is set to expire at the end of the year. Ray says given the threats, now is not the time to let that happen. David? Pierre Thomas live in Washington tonight. Pierre, thank you. We turn now to the investigation after a massive home explosion in Arlington, Virginia, outside the Capitol. Police called to the scene. They were there for hours trying to execute a search warrant. And then this is what happened. 
powerful blast. The home turned to splinters, shaking the entire neighborhood. Human remains found inside believed to be the suspect. ABC's Ike Jachi in Arlington tonight. Tonight, authorities are investigating what caused this massive explosion in Arlington, Virginia, just miles from the nation's capital, after they say a man barricaded himself in the house. We need all fire apparatus so we can get the house that's exploded, I believe. The blast just after 8 p.m. Monday, rattling homes. Neighbors nearly knocked off their feet. You just see explosion. You can feel it in your chest, on your face. Debris and embers raining down on the street. Police say before the blast, officers were at the home for nearly four hours, trying to serve a search warrant after reports of someone shooting flares more than 30 times over the area. The suspect, 56-year-old James Yu, refusing to surrender, discharging several rounds from a firearm as officers closed in. Then, this explosion. The FBI and ATF on the scene. Authorities say human remains were found at the site. The suspect was inside the residence at the time the, of the explosion, and he is presumed at this point to be deceased. David, officials said you made claims of fraud to the FBI that never led to an investigation. Meanwhile, a now-deleted LinkedIn page belonging to him contained hundreds of pages of paranoid conspiracy theories. David? Ike Ajachi in Arlington for us. Ike, thank you. We turn now to the dangerous series of storms pummeling the Pacific Northwest at this hour, and the major change then coming to the Great Lakes all the way into the Northeast. First look at the pictures tonight. This is from the west raging waters near Granite Falls, Washington. In fact, two more rounds of this on the way this week with up to two feet of snow in some places. In the east tonight, a fast moving system making roads slick from the Midwest to the Northeast. And behind it all, that blast of cold air, wind chills in the teens and the 20s. Let's get right to Chief Meteorologist Ginger Z back with us again tonight tracking it all. Hey, Ginger. Hey, good evening, David. So we've already seen some of those high rain totals close to nine inches. Huckleberry Ridge, Washington coming in with that. And ahead of it, record highs from Boise, Idaho to Helena, Montana in the 60s. So this is a warm core system, the one that's been hitting today. You'll end up with more rain from that, another one Thursday, and then another on Saturday. That's when the snow elevations are going to start to go up a bit or lower a little bit. And that's where we're talking about another one to two feet of snow. But you'll also have that four to eight inches. And here along the East Coast, we're talking single digits going into Thursday morning in New England, David. Ginger Z back with us tonight. We'll be watching first thing in the morning, Ginger. Thank you. We turn now to Capitol Hill tonight. And this evening, Alabama Republican Senator Tommy Tuberville ending his 10 month long blockade of more than 400 military promotions caving in his effort to block promotions because of his stance on abortion. ABC's Rachel Scott, normally on Capitol Hill, with us here in New York tonight, and the Senate already working to make some of those confirmations take place. And that's exactly right, David. Senator Tommy Tuberville has been standing in the way of these military promotions for 10 months to protest a completely unrelated matter, the Pentagon's abortion policy. He was under immense pressure from both Democrats and Republicans who said he was putting our national security at risk. Well, tonight, he suddenly backed off of those demands. More than 400 military promotions have now been confirmed by the Senate, and the president weighed in just moments ago, noting that after 10 months, none of his demands were met, saying in the end, it was all pointless, David. Rachel Scott, who's been covering this for many months now. Rachel, good to have you in New York. Meantime tonight, special counsel Jack Smith outlining a new argument he plans to use in former President Trump's election interference case involving January 6th, speaking to Trump's intent and his state of mind. Here's Jonathan Carl. Special counsel Jack Smith signaled today that he will make the case that Donald Trump is not only responsible for the violence that unfolded on January 6th, but that, quote, the rioters' disruption of the certification proceeding is exactly what the defendant intended. In a new court filing, Smith points to Trump's own words, including his recent statements on the campaign trail supporting those serving prison time for storming the Capitol, suggesting they did nothing wrong. I call them the J6 hostages, not prisoners. I call them the hostages, what's happened, and it's a shame. Smith is now saying, quote, the defendant's embrace of J6 rioters is evidence of his intent because it shows that these individuals acted as he directed them to act. Smith says he will present evidence that Trump could have called off the violence that day. The former president once told me in an interview that he wanted to go up to the Capitol during the attack and that the mob would have welcomed him. I was thinking about going back during the problem to stop the problem, doing it myself. 
Secret Service didn't like that idea too much. So, so what? And I could so, have done that, and you know what? I would have been very well received. Of course, Trump didn't go to the Capitol on January 6th. He sat in the dining room next to the Oval Office and did nothing for more than three hours to stop the violence unfolding on Capitol Hill. David? All right, Jonathan Carl in Washington. John, thank you. When we come back here tonight, the new lawsuit against Panera Bread. Allegations tonight now of a second death involving a drink there. And later here, our great Made in America Christmas is back. The new way to get your Christmas tree in a moment. Tonight, claims of a second death now allegedly linked to a highly caffeinated energy drink sold at Panera Bread. The company now facing a second lawsuit, a family in Florida claiming a 46-year-old man went into cardiac arrest and died after drinking charged lemonade in October. The family says he had high blood pressure and didn't consume energy drinks. Panera says the lawsuit is without merit. When we come back here tonight, actor Jamie Foxx in his first public appearance after being hospitalized and what he's now revealed. To the index, an actor Jamie Foxx making his first public appearance since being hospitalized for a major health scare, receiving an award at the Critics' Choice Celebration, emotionally telling the crowd he couldn't even walk just six months ago and that he wouldn't wish this on anyone. No word from Foxx of what doctors believe was behind it. When we come back here tonight, our great Made in America Christmas is back and we want your ideas, your one thing. Tonight, the Christmas tree and a new way to get one. ABC World News Tonight with David Muir, sponsored by Pacific Life, creating financial security for more than 150 years. Finally, our Made in America Christmas is back and it all starts with the tree. Our great Made in America Christmas is back, 12 years and counting, from the beautiful snow-covered trees of Oregon to the Christmas tree farms of northern New Hampshire. You know it's that time when someone passes you with their tree on their car. Tonight, we're out to celebrate our tree farmers across America. This is a Fraser fir? Yeah, it's a Fraser fir. From North Carolina. North Carolina, oh, yeah. Fantastic. And right there from Oregon, the noble fir. Here's the noble fir. Wow, that's nice. And look what we found. This is a Fraser fir. Look at this beauty. Yeah. Grown in North Carolina. How many years do you think it took to grow this tall? 15. 15 years. I mean, that's an investment. Is the tree on hold? No, this tree's not on hold. Oh, this is no. not going to be here for long. No, no. David Stess, Soho Trees in New York City. He spends part of the year on the farm, the other part here in the city. When people buy a tree, you know, made in America, grown in America, yes. how much do you think it actually helps the farmer back home? I think it helps a lot. I see what small farms and farmers are up against. And this year, a new place to get your Christmas tree. Who knew, in some of our national forests, you can scout your own tree and it's affordable. Hi, David. Olivia here with the White River National Forest. The White River National Forest in Colorado, north of Aspen. Do you have your Christmas tree yet this year? No worries if you don't. The Forest Service has got you covered. Look at all those trees. You purchase a permit at one of your local ranger stations or online at recreation.gov. You want to make sure that you bundle up. Dress really warm, get a warm coat, warm pants, good waterproof boots, gloves, a hat. Dress for the elements. And one more thing, measure your living room. Measure before you cut the tree down. Measure your living room so you make sure that you know the Christmas tree can fit through your front door. Thanks, Olivia. And the Pike and San Isabel National Forest, west of Colorado Springs, Brian Banks. Hi, David, and welcome to the Pike and San Isabel National Forest in sunny Colorado. He's not alone. You never know who you're going to run into in the National Forest. Don't be scared. And we wanted to know which trees are the most popular. Douglas fir and blue spruce. Happy, Happy holidays, holidays from the U.S. US Forest, Forest Service. Service. And then there's the Great American Tree Company in McKinleyville, California, where you can buy a Christmas tree kit. They ship it to you, and you grow your own tree. Happy holidays, David, from all of us at the John Steen Company. And it turns out they're listening to all of you at home. In the years since we first met you, David, we've heard from people all over the country. And while we started out growing really tiny seedlings, what people told us is they wanted a little bit larger trees. So now we're growing larger tree specimens that we can still ship all over America. What an idea, a tree with a little more of a head start. Aloha. Asia Carruthers on the big island of Hawaii, she bought some of those trees. All of our trees were just like that. Now we're here. And Mike Tyndall, Raleigh, North Carolina, he bought his trees too. We're looking forward to after the season, finding their forever homes. Look at this. While back in New York, you knew we would ask, who is the farmer behind this beauty? 
Hey, David, here's a 30-foot tree I planted when I was in my teens. Meet Charles Sturgill on the family farm in Jefferson, North Carolina, in the Blue Ridge Mountains since 1968. We'd love to grow smiles for Christmas morning for families in America. We've got to support our farmers. Absolutely. I'm 100% behind that. So remember, it's not just the gifts under the tree, it's the people behind them. Happy holidays, David, and thank you so much for joining with us to help spread the joy of trees across America. Made in America! <laughs> and we're just getting started. I'll see you right back here tomorrow. Good night. Thank you for making World News Tonight with David Muir, America's most watched newscast.